Today I'd like to talk to you about the Adreno LCD library, the actual character function, CHAR. If you've got any questions, subscribe. This is a Thought Kickstarter video. If I get, say, 10,000 subscribers, I'll release the documentation because you show a bit of interest. Until then, I'll work on the other projects, but I'd just like to show you what I discovered today. What's an LCD? Well, LCD is just like a little monitor you could connect to your Arduino board. The old days you used to have all the pins and you have to have an adaptive board. Now with an I2C you only need four cables. So this was the project, joystick control, and the idea was to have a remote control away from the main Arduino. Whenever I start a project and I get a new, say a new library, a new electronic device, whatever, I like to research it and learn as much as what I can for it. So on the Adrenos, it has a library that's got 20 examples. I'll go through all those 20 examples. That's what I've done with the LCD library. Now, I'm using the I2C LCD library. A bit different, a couple of differences. I'll just show you that. I've got it set up on the Premiere Pro, which I was just doing the editing. If you watch me, the other video I just put up the other day, Adreno must have code. You see I've tidied it up and I'm just getting ready for another project. What is the... LCD library. It has keywords. So these keywords tell it what to do. And it can only do what it is told and a particular way to do it. So the keywords I went through, this is a 16-2 LCD. So what it means, it's got two rows. When you're programming, one starts at zero. So if you have 10 things that go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the top row, which is the first row, is row zero. Second row is row one you have the columns, which is each little block of pixels. And the pixels are five pixels by eight. So you've got 40 pixels in one little block. And that's what we're concentrating on today, to make your characters out of those 40 pixels. Again, the columns start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the 16th column is number 15. Why is that important? Starting position over here, you'll see is C0, R0. So it's column 0, row 0. So in the keywords, behind the brackets, that's where you put your location. This point back here is column 15, which is the 16th column, and row 1. You want something to appear there, that's a code. If you want something to appear there, that's a code. Now I'll just go through the actual library of the keywords that worked, and I'll just show you what it does. This is the LC blink on, and you'll see the little block blink. And you can change this position again with the column and row parameters. Then you have cursor on. One of the things that I didn't quite understand is that all the examples you see of the character customization or making your own characters is they only use seven rows. And like I said, it's got eight rows in it. And the only use I could see was for the bottom row was for this cursor. So people are developing characters and they limited it themselves to only seven rather than eight. No mention of it anywhere what I could find. So, so that's cursor on. Again, you can move it to where you want. The backlight. This is switched off at the moment. The LCD is lit up by a backlight. So you may want to say battery power or whatever. You put the code on, backlight off, it'll go off for a second. Nothing. Come back on. But then you notice the text is still there and the text reappears. But you can turn it off. The display. And it clears the display of the characters being displayed. It doesn't clear the characters from the display. So it's a bit like if you turn on your TV and you adjust the brightness or whatever, television show is still there. It wipes it blue in this case, the text is still there. You have the code, it switches on, text is still there. So I switch off, switch on, and that text that is still there is still there when it's switched on. However, you can between the switch on to wipe or make it all blue, you can change your code in here so when it comes back on, it's a different code. So it's just a smoke and mirrors effect. Shows you the cursor, the column and row positions. Now you, you can send the actual start to the home position, zero, zero. So in the other positions you would have zero, comma, zero. This does the same thing. So LCD set dot home, 
that text is sent to home. Then there's other transition keywords. And it's right to left, left to right, all this sort of thing. Some work, some don't. As you see it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and a dash. I'm just showing you a dash. Now when you LCD right to left, it swings it around right to left. So like you've rotated it around the center. And there's left to right and that sort of thing. Now the LCD scroll display, it just looks like gibberish. It's not a smooth transition like you might see in video. So there's display left. Some of them work, some of them you might have a long line of text and part of it appears and part of it doesn't. So a bit of mucking around to get what you want. Then you have, like you have your serial print, you can actually print to the LCD screen, which is how you do it. You can print LCD dot print str string is only text only. So that will only print a text. If you do LCD print and then what you're going to print can be a variable or a string. If you have a variable or a number in there, behind the, the number you can put the comma and a bin for binary, decimal, opt or hex and it will do a conversion for you. So it can convert a number from one to the other just in the print statement. So here we've entered in 9 and it as a bin it displays 1001 and as des it shows 9. You can use it to display certain values that are converted at the print time which is handy. Now this is the some of the ones auto scroll doesn't work well I couldn't get it working. So you scroll display works a bit better. Now this is what the main video is about today. Make your own icon, your own character. C-H-A-R. On the project, it's going, it going to have a LiPo battery. You don't drain them from 12 volts down to 1 volt. There's a narrow range up the top. So your voltage might be this much. You've got a critical voltage through here. I wanted to make up a battery icon on the display to show the voltage, save any problem. I followed all the other examples and made up a little battery icon. I thought, great. Then there was just the final bit of keywords. That battery is what made me develop what I've developed today. And then the last one here you can do with the serial monitor. You open up your serial monitor on your PC. You can type something in, hit enter, and it will display on the LCD. So it can be a two-way display. In this particular uh, loop, so I put all the keywords, I'm looping through, and you think, oh yeah, type in, and you go to type, and the time's up, and it didn't display. Ah, so I put, don't worry, it shows the next loop. What happens there is that you've typed it in, and it may not display because you looped to something else, but it's in there. So when you go through your loop again, when it gets down there, it will display it. Now that may be a problem. You may have to pause here to delay until it's actually come and read. That type of thing. Just that I had a lot of quick typers. I did type in and it's just looping around again. And this is what I've typed in. I typed in enter and then I enter it on there. That character there at the end is the enter character on the Adreno. I didn't type it. That's the library and that's the range of functions, keywords you have. And that's what you've got to work with. So I said okay. So I started working on my menu. And with the slider home, the slider has a lock in it. So I said, right, that'll be the lock position. And to make sure it's unlocked before you switch it on. I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And then unlock now. And I thought, oh, I get that to animate, you know, scroll left, scroll right. And then you see all the hassles and it didn't look that good. So I made up my first special characters. On the joystick, the slider goes left and right and the camera will zoom in and out. So I made up my special character, a large Z and a small Z, and an arrow left and an arrow right. Then you find out that for your special characters, you can only have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was one character for the Zs, and that was another character for the arrows. So then when I move the joystick, I don't have to call up a special character because it's I can use a capital Z, lowercase Z, for the different directions, which happens here. If you want to move left, there is no alphabet, so that's another character. And if I wanted to move right, that's another character. So that could be four already, and I've only got eight. So what I wanted to do was animate the battery. I said, okay, show it coming down. This will cycle through twice, so I'll just show you. So the way you animate that, watch the top one, and the bottom one is each one coming on top of the other. So you, you draw up a full battery as one character, three quarters battery as second quarter down and there's your four or five characters 
So as it went down, full, three quarters, half quarter, empty. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five characters out of the eight just for the battery. And that's what it looked like. And then I made the blink that I showed you before to get your attention. So, so that's it. I thought, oh, it's not very versatile. So then I put the thinking cap on and I experimented and I tried it. And you know, you spend hours doing something, it doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and, but then finally something works. And this little display here said it all. I was so pleased. My smile was up here. And I had an idea, and this was a proof in the pudding. It worked. So all what I had read about doing it this, doing this way, that way, you got to do this, I just went, and I did it my way. And that proved my initial idea of how to do it. Then from that, once I knew that seed, that grain, I then developed it from there. Because I knew I was on the right path. Some of you may be able to recognise what those pixels mean, and you'll know exactly how I did it. I then went on to the animation. Now, I shot that with the phone, and the phone hasn't got a macro lens. That's why the battery is blurry. And I then put an eyepiece in front of the phone to the LCD, trying to hold it. But this was my first animation. Not bad. If I wanted to make that line move up, I would do one pixel character, a double pixel character, a three pixel character, a four pixel character, a five pixel character, all the way up, but that would then use up every character allocation I had, and it would do one line. But as you saw, 40, and then it, then it can wipe back. I'll just show it to you again. That is an animated character. Not eight, not 40, one. I repeat, not eight, one. Not having limited to one or two, all the pixels. 40 pixels in one character animating. <laughs> Has a penny dropped yet? Can you see why this is important? Why this should unleash your creativity? And why it's worth 10,000 subscribers? So to film the actual other development, I set up the old macro lens on the camera. If I had the three extension rings, I could get a single block of the character, and with one block, I could get the width of the row. So it was a lot easier than shaking around. You would see this set up in the other video on the Adreno must-have code, and I've tied it all the way in here for this one. That's what I did to set it all up. This is what it looks close up. And that's a full block animating up and down. What's it used for? Well, you may have a volume, uh, doof doof music going somewhere, and that could be uh, your volume there, doof 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 doof. And you can put in different values. You could have a sensor, temperature, a warning, anything like that. As I'm saying, this is the seed to get your imagination going. So then, I thought, okay, your icon doesn't have to be, <coughs> there it is. You can now animate it. This one just spiraled in. And as you're sure in other videos, it can spiral out. Or it could wipe up to the top or wipe to the bottom. A lot better than the old scroll left and scroll right and that sort of thing. So let's have a look what this does. Wipes away. There's my battery icon. It's wiped up, wiped away, and produced the battery icon. One character. I will repeat that all the time. One special character. So here's 100, the 100% the percentage sign is over here. But watch each block. The other one, remember we had three quarters full, half full, quarter full, empty. I had the 40 pixels. Okay, I lost four to make it look like a battery. Then you have to have the outside frame to look like a battery. So I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Three fives are 15. On the battery, I can have 15 steps to show me what the voltage is. So that could be We'll say one and a half volts. So that could be from 12 to 13 and a half volts. And I only just have to look at the one icon and I can see how it's going down. Even if I didn't want to have the, the display here. So that's only percentage. It can be volts with whatever you like. Watch it as it goes down. Each block will disappear and the voltage, will, the percentage will drop down. And it blinks for the warning. 
How many other battery voltage indicators have you seen on Adreno that does that? If you find any, send me the link, okay? I thought that was great. Now, if you are interested, you can start a discussion here on my channel, on this page, and backwards and forwards, and from time to time I'll chime in. I've developed what I wanted out of it. Now I thought, what else could it do? I drew up a Chevron which is a greater than sign, and I used the double block thickness. I started experimenting and animating. So now it animates across the screen. Then it animates on the bottom row. All one character. You can develop your one special character and the way you creatively decide how to use it, because this is the tool, this isn't an end. I'm not going to give you a bit of paper so here, you know, thanks. No, this is to get you thinking, to get your creative juices going. So then you, you can, you know, menu items can scroll across, can be animated across. Which menu item you're in on an LCD, it can flash, it can do all these other things grab people's attention. So then I experimented and you find out that the delay time is very important. This block here actually starts building a block and it animates like that. It then seems like once the character has been fully animated, when it moves on to the next block, it doesn't animate as slowly as the first one. So it just sort of copies it, copies it, copies it, rather than drawing it, drawing it, drawing it. So that's where you have your design, you work it out, then you have to fine tune it with the delay. Just by changing the timing, every single one pulses. Every character on every row in every column is pulsing. One special character. The CNC 4A method is taking you to the next level. Imagine what you can do with it. Then I thought, okay, that was enough experiment, the project, because I didn't do all this in one afternoon, I can tell. So then I done what I needed to do, done a bit of experimenting for artistic needs or whatever. But then I thought, okay, when you have your, your 16, I can now put a battery on there and I don't have that percentage. So I'm, I'm using up all the real estate quite effectively. I thought, well, I've got 40 pixels here. Could I make a calculator display in one special character? And I did. <laughs> it may be a bit hard to read. People can read Chinese. People can read Japanese. People can read Korean. Any of those symbolic languages. So this is just another symbol. And the symbol is binary code. It is a binary display. I made up the calculator and that will just show you a static block. So this is looping from 2 to the power of 0 all the way up to 2 to the power of 32. Now as you know, the Adreno only goes up to 32, so I couldn't display any more than that. This is just the loop to go through. So you smart guys out there will recognise the code, the display. But then... You start to notice, as it gets higher, seems like the more calculations do, because the bigger number, it's running through all the code to work out the display. It seems like the bigger number, the more work it has to do, the less time it has to actually change the pixels and keep them on the screen. So the bigger number wasn't coming bright white, it was coming out grey. Now, I could go in there later and adjust the timing to, you know, to adjust that or say, it may be 50 milliseconds up here, or 100 milliseconds, or 300, you may have to have 500 or 1000 down the bottom for a big number. But that was because it was looping through. It was as a calculator, it would be a solid number and it would work fine. So as you can see, there is huge potential for this. I hope the penny has dropped and the light bulb above your head has turned on and you fully understand what I'm getting at today. If you have, then it's been worth my time and your time making this video. Tell all your friends to subscribe and we'll all be happy. So as always, thanks for watching.